Good morning. Here we are again in 1 Peter chapter 5, and we only have today's message, and then tomorrow's, and we're finished the book. Now, Peter's going to pick back up with the theme of suffering. That has been his theme pretty much from chapter 1 all through the book of 1 Peter. He's trying to let Christians know it's normative. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love us. It doesn't mean that God's not with us. It doesn't mean that he's lost control of our circumstances. He's saying that when evil exists in the world and we function living the way God lives and loving the way God loves, we're, we're going to be on a collision course and evil is going to overtake us at some point. And God does not intervene in every case to deliver us from it. In fact, sometimes uh, he does <clears throat> greater work in and through our lives by allowing evil to seemingly uh, o- overcome us for short periods of time. He's going to talk about that short period of time beginning in chapter 5, verse 10. He says, "...and the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you, make you strong, firm, and steadfast." To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. So here we have the theme again. He says, uh, you know, the God of all grace who called you to, to eternal glory in Christ after, after you have suffered a little while. Now, when he says a little while, there's no time frame. Uh, a little while, frankly, can be a, a short space of time in our life. It might be a month, a week, a year, three years, five years. It could be a lifetime of, of suffering. In fact, if, if we were to suddenly be able to transport ourselves in time and go back to the first century and just live the average life of a first century person, we, we would consider it extreme suffering. We, we would consider it unbearable suffering. But they would all be like, what, what is your problem? This is just normal life. So sufferings of various sort are just a, a part of life. But this is an encouraging verse that says that that God's utilizing suffering. It's part of his methodology. He says that that he'll bring it to a close. It's only for a little while. And it's going to result in uh, God's going to see to it that we're we're restored. He uses some interesting terms here. He says, he himself will restore you, make you strong, firm, and steadfast. So when we go through a suffering and we hold to our trust in Christ, we hold to obedience to the Word of God, it builds up our character, it builds resilience, it builds strength. We are those that operate on principle. We don't operate by feelings. Circumstances can come and circumstances will go, but they don't govern the follower of Christ. We, we live our lives based on our trust in God, in His Word, and the longer that we do that, and in the, mo- the more tempting or difficult circumstances we do it in, the greater the strength of our character is developing. And so that's why God can say that after you've suffered a little while, it's going to bring something good. I'm going to restore you, says God, and then you're going to be firm and you're going to be steadfast. And so the sufferings are not wasted. God doesn't, doesn't waste the sufferings in our life. They are meant to be not um, destructive. They are meant to be developmental sufferings in our life. So when we go through sufferings, we need to always keep these truths in mind that, that God's utilizing these things. Sometimes there, there are layers in our own soul that are uh, depriving us of development, Christ-like development, and we're not even aware of those, those layers. But when we go through certain friction, when we go through certain struggles, um, sometimes these things are forced to the surface. When they're forced to the surface, they allow both us and God to deal with these things to, in some cases, uh, get, get them cleansed up, uh, get them healed up, and in other cases, just to, to bluntly remove them. You know, we, we can't remove what we are, we're not aware of. So he gives us this final word. He says that it's to him, verse 11, is the power forever and ever. So our circumstances are never out of control. And this doesn't mean that they won't feel out of control sometimes. But that's when we have to remind ourselves, you know, God is not caught by surprise. He's with me. He's for me. I might think or feel like I'm facing this all on my own. When you go through a struggle, go through a trial, it can feel very lonely, like, you know, you are just in this and nobody else really knows what it feels like to be you. But that isn't true. Christ is always with us, and he is the only one that can really feel and experience on the inside what we ourselves do. He's with us. He'll restore us. He'll make us firm and strong, and that's what we can count on. So I hope this, uh, this little, little scripture portion today will, will give you strength, give you hope, give you courage, give you joy in your walk with Christ.